excited to have uh, Alex King, the co-founder of Ledge Group, a rapidly growing HR and recruitment technology business. Alex, thanks so much for joining us here today on our Sales Empowering Series. We're also excited to have Alex as a, as a partner and Ledge HR as a partner when we uh, when we recruit for businesses. So it's an, it's an exciting time to also be introducing the partners we work with and the and the, the value they add to the solution. Alex, if you want to just tell us a little bit about Ledge HR. Um, it is privately owned. Um, Ledge, Ledge Group sits within um, Elco, in short for uh, Elevated Corporation. And this was, uh, so this is a private equity ecosystem that was started by uh, Joshua Del Rio. So he was former um, CEO of Kaiser Trading, which um, they were, I think they were one of Australia's largest systematic hedge funds. But when, he, when he's left from there, he started bringing about these sort of principles and these values. And then Elko started forming into shape. And basically, just to give you a bit of backstory, that, that's kind of like the, the central hub where we have the you know shared values, principles, technology processes, and that's kind of sits in the back end. And then anything that sprouts out of it, which is Ledge Group, um, no matter what business unit you have, no matter what industry you are, you still have a very similar way of viewing the world and making certain decisions and, and how you like take appreciation to time, value, outcome. And then there was a, there's a few other business units going around that as well, but it is it has been completely funded by um, ourselves. I guess the journey about where we wanted to go as a whole. So, you know, Ledger Group, we are a, uh, you know, it's a rapidly growing HR tech and recruitment technology business. You know, it's gone from zero to 20 people. Elko has gone from about zero to 30 people in two years. Um, and the, when we first started, there was always the big ambition of doing the HR technology, the scalable solutions, which we sort of had a bit of a chat about recently. But I guess the, the lowest hanging fruit was the, the recruitment side mm, of things because, mm. yeah, that's my background. And we knew that's a great way to, you know, you know, there's not many barriers of entry. It's a great way to get a bit of money coming through the door. And then it gives us a bit more to put into that R&D as well. So it's been a it's been a great journey. And it's great that we haven't had to, need, you know, have the need of someone else coming in to uh give us their their funds and but also their opinions so it's been, yeah, a, it's been yeah. a great journey you pretty much were there from the get-go so you've seen it grow from zero to 20. here from day one so we started i mean if you just want to know like how it started it just really came from a this was not last christmas the christmas before um we were just having a bit of a conversation so josh is a really close friend of mine mm -hmm. and i was with him and uh, rebecca del rio his partner and we were just having a few conversations like this and yeah, we're just going back to our days and talking about commission structures and he was getting pretty curious and then we kept spitballing things and then we just said why don't we just create our own and then i thought oh, hold on you've got the brain profiling technology i've got a recruitment background mm. why don't we just bring it together and do data-driven recruitment and then we were up to about 4 a.m. on the whiteboard, just scribbling all these things and and then within about four weeks i started with ledge group Wow. Okay. Well, quite a journey there, Alex. It's wow. been an interesting journey. I'm so, yeah. And it's been a fun, look, it's been a fast paced one, but I think, you know, that's what happens when you get the right people. And when you're not doing decisions out of desperations, when you're really thinking about things very carefully and you're trying and you try and make sure that you focus on the true events that are going to get you the best value rather than just chasing the low hanging fruit or the little details. Mm. It's like trying to focus on what compound return is, not like linear return. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So it led, led to HR led group. You know, the biggest thing is, you know, yes, like you said, rapidly growing HR tech and recruitment technology um, company. And the big thing is, is we are, uh, all about trying to create um, tools for people um, to help understand people better in order to build high-performing teams. And this is across a lot of different solutions and, and recruitment or onboarding or leadership support. But it, it's been just because you know we believe that people or we know people are the most important resource of a business. It's just they're really hard to understand and we want to make it easier to understand that to make more well-informed decisions, to gain more positive value outcomes. That's that's us as a whole. 
No, I'm, 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 I'm really sensing the passion there. I can see how passionate you guys are, and and it's clear because you know, uh, privately funded, uh, you know, in the span of two years, growing from zero to thirty, mm -hmm. you've obviously got a lot of value in, in the solution that you guys offer, and and I and I think it's an awesome solution. My background is also talent acquisition, yep. Yep. human resources, so I've been through that that journey like yourself and come out of it and then thought, you know, how do we make sure that when we recruit for businesses, mm -hmm. um, we're adding as, as much value as we can, right? So yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And I, I like the piece on data-driven recruitment because everyone's talking about that, right? Yeah. So you can share more about how Ledge HR as a yeah. group does that really well. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess at the core of a lot of the things that we do is our brain profiling uh, technology. Mm -hmm. So this has been this is something that we own and operate. This is something that has been built on by you know leading scientific assessment frameworks. But I guess there's a bit of a a uh, bit of a work practical application to it as well. Um, what we do with our recruitment is is that we use this, that's one side of the equation and then there's the role side. But from this side is, we're trying to use this technology to understand people's archetypes. Mm. Um, and an archetype basically is, if you had a single piece of information in front of five different people, there would be different lenses that everyone would look through and receive that information. And those lenses are archetypes. So my, my archetype, I don't know what yours is, I'm gonna to have to get you to do the test, but mine's an explorer, shaper, promoter, very conceptual, very people orientated, um, fairly rational, zero detail. That's pretty typical of a salesperson. But by understanding this, it just means we're sort of armed with a lot more information about you know who they are and how they can apply themselves. And then in our recruitment process, that's just one particular side of the fence. But the other one is when we're going through and catching up their clients, and you know you'd go through the role brief, you talk about it, they'd give you their spiel. Um, you then get the client or HR, usually the hiring manager, because they're closest to the role, to do our uh, role profiling test. Mm -hmm. So when they do that, um, basically it's an objective breakdown of the mechanics of everything that's going on in the role, you know, the expectations, maybe some of the cultural norms across the business. And then once they complete that, we sort of crunch, we're crunching the numbers and then we're getting a good understanding of, okay, we can now identify that these are the top three archetypes that are going to be best suited for this um, type of role in this particular company, because you can have the same title in five different companies, but you're still going to need different personality styles in there because, you know, their decision-making speed, their, their systems are different, the size of the company is different. So it will alter whether you want someone conceptual or want someone a bit more uh, structured, organized, it really does change things. So we map it out. And I guess a part of the process being data driven because it's a bit different you do have to have a bit more level of education um mm. within this because you have to then go because there's a lot of times that we go through the process of we go back to the clients and we say well look i know you said you were looking for this and which is a bias but you're actually looking for this type of personality and this is why you've actually turned over a few times because what we're doing is we're breaking down that role from the test and then as the candidates come through to the shortlist, we're mapping and matching their archetype um, personalities to know, are we getting the best fit? Best mm. fit for purpose, best fit for team. Um, and it's not just about, you know, having the technical piece is one thing, but the fact is, if you're not aligned and if, if it goes against your way of thinking, it's it makes feel good in the interview process, but ultimately it won't work because mm. you're telling someone who's conceptual to be super... Um, mm. to be super organized and structured and it just won't work and that's the that's the difference about what we're trying to do with uh, you know with our partners and what we do it's about making sure that we're trying to create an unbiased learning and decision making process and to create the best as in because you can have two interviews with someone and you can make a good guess on them but you can't know everything about them and it's really hard to understand like you know how competitive are they how much grit do they have you know, how do they really interpret information? We want to do that. So if you can do it at the beginning, it saves you a lot of time and a lot of headache rather than doing a tick box process at the end because it doesn't change your decision-making in the end. No, I agree. Um, I mean, I'm just 
curious because you know there are a lot of businesses specifically i mean we specialize predominantly in sales recruitment yeah and when you're talking to sales leaders they they want to take as many shortcuts as they can in the process yeah let's yeah. be honest because there's there's let's you you mentioned it yourself it's all about the um uh, the lack of detail right yeah. Yeah. um and 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 when you talk to your people and performance coaches and and talent leaders and mm. and they're very interested because they they the business looks at them as uh, when it comes down to retention and those mm. kind of um uh those kind of reporting that's what they yeah. that's what they take control of right yeah. so um i just i just want to understand you know from from your experience and and i mean is there a particular type of role that you do more of this is it just hr managers or because they're more bought into this or or is there yeah it, it, it's just interesting because we want yeah. we want to make sure that every business across the different roles they're recruiting are finding value in this yeah so the last yeah. two years where i mean just from your experience where do you see this you know usually being uh, yeah agnostic. look yeah good question and look in terms of this it is quite agnostic because you you're literally breaking down a role breaking down a person and then mapping them together to do the best decision um mm -hmm. would we do be doing it for labor hire in a fast moving temp environment probably not useful. No. probably not no. useful i mean what we've done so we we cover across a range of different um range of different industries you know started in hr but now it's like it tech you know business support admin it is it is very very functional across the board i'd say so what you said before about with hr professionals it's definitely a, maybe a lot easier for them to get involved because they kind of understand that the value uh, the value and the implicit costs sometimes when you talk to people they only focus on the explicit but hr is very good at understanding that actual value outcome from a people perspective mm -hmm. um but I think the biggest thing about it is you just need to know know the audience and then know how they are going to relate to it because you just can't have a you know a one style approach. You know what you give to HR is very what very different to what I give to sales because um, HR is about you know creating this great decision making. It's very unbiased. But then to sales, it's you know, and I, I've talked to a few sales leaders, and it's a really good one because it's like how do you map out? that competitive nature like how do we map out how you do well and then you can bring them onto the journey because a lot of the times people say oh you know uh, we like to do it like this and and this is the way we've made decisions and I'm like okay well how's that worked out for you because you just said that role turned over three times in the last year they're like oh yeah okay so it's like well okay what are we working with here like let's, mm -hmm. let's break it down a little bit more and I think with this especially with salespeople, probably good for you um Raina, is that you talk about it in a sense of you know can you I can you tell me who uh maybe some of your top performers and they go yeah sure that'd be this person this person this person it's like okay well what we can do is we can get them to do the tests and we can identify what are some of the key trends that we're seeing as the key archetypes that are performing well and then when we bring people in we can almost replicate them so so we're actually trying to clone people now and wouldn't you want a team of absolutely gun operators? And then they go, yeah. <laughs> so it's it becomes a very simple conversation. You just got to know exactly what they're looking for. And salespeople, they just want, they want high performance. That's all they want. They want people who are, and if you can say, do you love Madison over there? And she's one of the best in the country. It's like, yeah, well, wouldn't you want another Madison? Yeah, well, okay, we can do that. We can absolutely find that for you. And they based on come. data, yeah. I mean, we, um, Alex, we we use a very similar profiling tool, and they say mm -hmm. that, but it's just that the high performing mm -hmm. um, uh, sales professionals just never get the test done. We've said mm -hmm. those. We've said you know they just never do it, and and the and the sales leaders lack in follow up to be able to do it. So I think I mean it'd be good to understand where your success has been, right? Is it been more large enterprise businesses mm -hmm. that have, you know, massive yeah. teams? Or is yeah. it, because see, our, it, and this is this is purely offline, our client base is startups that are growing and they need a recruitment partner, partner to help them grow. 
or smaller businesses that don't have a lot of a, a lot of cash to burn right yeah and, and that's a that's a good point because a lot of what we're trying to do is we, we want to be that ongoing partner as well for the company so we actually help with that burden so we want to you know we do a lot of the hard work anyway so if there is follow-up required and little things like that it actually can come from our end so mm -hmm. we're trying to enforce that nature because once you get a few of the leaders doing it it starts getting you know word around the street mm. and we get involved a bit more yeah there has been people in the past where you know it might take them a little bit but you just need to fly them in on the right journey and mm. they eventually do come around especially when they see some of the other people getting involved because then we get that we get a really good engagement rate we get great feedback to it typically in terms of the company size look one day yeah we will want to go to those large-scale enterprise ones but typically we involve ourselves with people around that 250 headcount and less um we just find we just find like for example you know we've worked with like Gurner it's a boutique um property developer about 100 people and we've got a manufacturing company that we work with is about 60 people it I find that when you're working at people at that sort of scale it's a little bit quicker to make decisions um there's not too much red tape to go through exactly and, uh, and there's not a, like a tech there's not a tech graveyard like I've gone to some and like Reese or service stream and they're like oh yeah but we use this 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 I'm like okay how have you applied it they go oh no we don't really apply it. I'm like um okay <laughs> do right. you actually find value and you're right there's a lot of tools businesses have implemented and they just don't I mean yeah. I remember being part of the uh, head of talent acquisition and and the hiring manager goes, okay, so I need to have a look at another assessment report. I don't even care. I like the person, right? So, yep. uh, oh well, you know, you need to look at this. All right, all right. As long as they, as long as they, as long as you're happy, they don't even care, right? So, yeah. I think it's um, the, the buy-in from the decision maker and, and the value. And I think, yep. you know, you've shared some really good stats here on uh, your predictive hiring tech achieving ninety-seven percent of uh, probation. Um, uh, that's six month success rate. So I think that's bloody awesome because yeah. <laughs> especially especially in sales, the turnover is extremely high, right? Yeah. And yeah. As, a, as a sales recruiter, what we're trying to um, make sure we're doing correctly is uh, we, we, uh, in recruitment, we don't want to be replacing because it's, it's, it's heavily time consuming. Oh, and yeah, from absolutely. From a perspective, we want to build, we want to build teams that stick right and and i think a solution like ledge hr would enable us to do that better and and businesses yeah. should see the value because i mean you don't want to use or pay an agency fee an external agency fee uh if someone's not going to work out past mm. six months it's a, a massive investment in their time uh but yeah you know, absolutely hiring, yeah. like i mean yeah. let's be honest every hire is a risk but if you can minimize that risk why not yeah, absolutely. Well, look, that's the thing. Every replacement is two and a half times their salary oh, um, totally. in, in I costs. That's just you know, explicit cost. But and it's a big thing, and that's why it's so important. I mean, and like you said about bringing them on the journey, you know, that's why we go through a lot of some sessions with people, like with our connectivity and engagement, and some of the services we do is we're trying to definitely get the leaders involved and a bit mm. more engaged about what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve, and we actually get a lot of them coming back with a lot more questions, which is great because that means um, they're engaged. And I guess the big thing about this is is having all this information um, before you get into the decision zone, before you have to you know, make the decision yeah. of hiring them. It's better because you know the potential gaps that they have on the role because you know, you know you're mapping, we've mapped out the pr primary archetype against their archetype and you're seeing, okay, there is a bit of a gap here no, it's not. It's an amber. It's an amber light, not a red light. But I'm going to question that hard in the interview. So at least we know exactly what we're trying to flesh out, and it just makes it easier for us to make the decision. And it gives us a bit of a an idea for something that we need to be considerate about in the first, you know, two months or the first sixty to ninety days as well. Brilliant. Well, I, I mean, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the connection and engagement piece, right? Which is the follow up, because that's 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 the partnership we we want to be forming with Ledge HR, right? Because um, I feel uh, most employees leave managers and not businesses, and and if you're doing your role right as a sales, like I'm talking from from our niche as a sales leader with that yeah. with the whole engagement piece and so forth, yeah, um, you're yeah. more likely to have an engaged team and a high performing team, right? 
how do you how do you measure that and and can you tell us a little bit about you know that solution because i think that's i've never seen anything like that before yeah so it's so with the the connectivity and engagement solution that's um it combines sort of our brain pro our brain profiling role profiling technology but as well as um our we've got like an engagement program that we go through and we're really trying to um really trying to, to help connect and bridge people together to help understand each other to build that engagement and re- build that relationship and ultimately that engagement across the board as well so like you said you when you start a new job, you, you've got a brand new relationship that's got a blank canvas and it's hard to understand someone quickly. It, it might take months before you get a bit of a feel about, okay, they're a bit like this, they're a bit like that. But in that time, a lot can go wrong. You can say one thing that you think is normal and they receive it is in a completely different way. So, and like you were saying before, it, it's really important at this um, stage because, you know, we've got like the highest mobility rate since uh, 2012 um but the most important form of in- engagement in terms of that um that lack of engagement it's that connection between the employee and the the manager so that's pretty much the the number one way that we're going to get engagement and there was like a there was a Gallup study that um that showed that just the the higher engaged workplaces have a 41 percent lower absenteeism rate mm. um, so it does make a big it does make a big effect so what we're trying to do is what we do with our um, solutions, um, which is a bit different to some of the traditional tools. I, I think like some that people use maybe around, um, you know, there might be tools that people use for psychometric testing or they might use pulse checks. But when you do this, you basically, you're getting a lot of information and a lot of metrics, which is good. But then it incurs an upfront burden onto HR because then they have to start interpreting the information and it actually takes way too much time and then it becomes overwhelming and they simply don't know what to do with all this information. So we're trying to make sure that when we come in that our solution is about you know helping you put together all the pieces of the, the psychometric tests, the engagement surveys, all those well-being checks. Mm. We do the heavy lifting and only surface relevant actionable insights along that journey together so for just a simple way of doing it um simple relationship would be a new employee and the hiring manager we'd get them both to do the brain profiling um test Mm -hmm. it takes about 20 minutes um and then the manager would also do an additional uh role profiling uh role mapping report as well and what we do in the early stages we just want to see how everything intersects we want to know you know what potential sources of friction could occur with this particular relationship and how does it relate exactly to the role? And then we get them to sit down in the first week to have just like an initial discovery together where they actually, um, we get a report together just to say on three core levels of engagement about where they differ the most and simple scenarios of how they might perceive things differently and then we just give them a series of questions to talk through so that they understand each other and it's just about trying to understand each other's way of thinking because the the earlier you are with this information the more uh, the more armor you have i say when you go through the process and then once we've done this we do a series of engagement checks for the six month probation period usually it's about every two weeks we do this and from these um, reports, when we get the information, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to see is, okay, are these, um, any of these issues surfacing? And if they are, our um, people scientists are crunching the numbers in relation to the candidates, you know, individual learning preference in relation to the manager's style, mm. and then relaying it back to the manager to say, we've identified something, it could be a potential risk, if you do steps one, two, three, just really simple, this will now dissipate. And then what would, so what it is, is just this preemptive navigation tool for the manager, which is a great support tool, especially for emerging leaders. Mm -hmm. And it's just making sure it's like, okay, if there is an obstacle, we've already identified it. This is how you go around it. And now we're getting, we're back on track again. And then we're tracking the levels of the engagement from the individuals and the relationships back to HR to provide them with uh, like a holistic overview of their, you know, their entire workforce about 
where is my um, engagement levels coming from? Is it, you know, is there lack of comms? Is there certain lacks of connections? Is there things I need to be careful of? But you're doing it with like a live snapshot so you can get onto it straight away. And it takes, um, it means, because we're doing that sort of heavy lifting along the way, it means that we're kind of micro dosing all along the way with all the, the workforce. Is this, is this all done online through a through a platform? Or- yeah, yeah. So we have a, so we have a portal that we provide it with, uh, with HR and they have a complete overview of all the relationships that they have on. They can go into the individual relationships just to test, okay, what is the score of their engagement? So usually it's out of five and then you've actually, you know, you might go across, it's like, okay, Alex and Raina, they've got a 4.8 engagement score from the, you know, from all the checks that we've done. Um, May and Sally, they've got a 3.5 what's that coming from? Okay, it's coming down to communications. I might have to address that as well. So you're getting a high level overview from their perspective of like the cause of relationships. Okay, so this solution I can see awesome for someone that's in a HR leadership. uh, Oh yeah. Yeah, because they they would go, all right, this is awesome for us to be able to assess our 360 management, you know, those 360 um, Mm. um, management, surveys that oh they yeah, yeah. And stuff. but this is it's probably a bit more micro you know then yeah how- i mean you're still you're still playing a macro game but the, the yeah. difference is say um when you do say if you do like say culture amp they do the the, the pulse checks mm. and they're good like you know those guys are bloody smart at what they do but it's a wide level overview of you know some key metrics and that gives you just some perspective of what's going on but you don't understand so much the why. And because we're going from the individual learning and the archetypes and the actual one-to-one relationships, that's all building a bigger story at the top and you know exactly where it's stemming from. So you, you're understanding the macro. And yeah, like you said, you can go down to the micro and, and understand, okay, I know exactly what's going on. And like you said, it's a great one from that leadership perspective because we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. We're identifying potential traps, anything along the way here. And then from their perspective, the metrics that they're viewing, they're understanding the causal relationships of what actually is occurring. Because I think a lot of what happens is when people, and I'm sure you've heard this a lot, like when people leave or when you go to a company and you ask, you know, what happened with the last person? Why are we replacing this position? You know, a lot of the times you just get answers that are like, oh, look, I just don't think they were right. Mm. And I was like, yeah. I don't think that's a fair assessment. Whereas this actually gives them that relationships to say, well, they left because the manager wasn't able to communicate correctly and we need to work on that now because we're understanding yeah. what's really like how that person is actually taking in that information. No, awesome. Okay, brilliant. I think this is, uh, you know, this is this is a game changer for any business that really wants to um, retain uh, yeah, and, it, and, yeah, and for us, I think sales, sales, sales teams, and and uh, you know where where there's the highest turnover. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're going to keep doing what you're doing, you're going to get the same results. So trying something, absolutely, yeah, you know, absolutely. But it's something different. A lot we we found because we've been going for about uh, we released it about four months ago, um, and just the engagement has been has been great. The applications. Are starting to get even bigger like we've been caught up with a large scale company and and they said um this would be perfect for the grad programs and mm-hmm. like, this would be perfect for grad programs because you're trying to take someone who's gone from a theoretical world into the real world workplace yes. and this is how you support them along that way so now it's a grad program solution as well um mm-hmm. because it's all just about people you're just trying to understand what is going on and how they intrinsically motivated and from the hr's perspective the company's perspective there's the leader who is being supported because it's really tough to be a leader now because everyone's stretched already. And to try and if you have five people in a team with five different learning preferences, it's really hard to understand that. Um, and then you have the um, new employee, which is getting a good sense of belonging because you're creating a system that's based on their individual learning preference. And they have a place to provide constructive criticism to a degree. So it's quite interesting. So this is all stemming up and then going into their EVP as well, because now you've created a brand new onboarding program as well, mm. which is which is an edge in itself. And you're understanding real um, 
causal relationship in order to make the change that you need to make rather than guessing and shooting from the hip. Yeah. And I think um, most businesses, I mean, especially with the kind of um, decision makers and hiring managers we work with, um, they tend to go by gut, their gut feel. And, and they all want to hire people like them yeah. because they think, yeah. oh, but I mean, that's not going to work, right? I mean, that's yeah. what why. And I think the whole data-driven uh, yep. recruitment yep. model is, is, is the way to go because um, yep. and businesses that are doing that effectively are the ones that are having uh, the Absolutely. results that they need, right? I mean... Yeah, you know, you're mirroring. That, yeah. That's what happens is you, you're mirroring something about your own personality because it's comfortable because that's what it is and that's what we want and that's the thing that we say here is very much you need in order to work at ledge or elco is you need to be comfortable in being uncomfortable and that's what you have to do with this you actually have to trust in a bit of a system and mm. be uncomfortable because it's so if for myself i would yeah i would absolutely lean to someone who replicates my personality because it's comfortable but i'm not looking for another me and i'm not looking for another role that's my role it's another role and so we've got to be careful not to fall into that trap. And the biggest thing is um, at the high level is when you've got, because with the predictive hiring and, and happy to go through it with you, you've got a portal as well that we have and it maps out all the roles. So what you're really creating is a learning and feedback um, framework mm. so that you know what decisions you made for a role, who it was, why you made it, and if it was wrong, we can actually go back and learn why it was wrong so that we can make change and that we can grow. And by having that information, it means you're always going to stack knowledge. Mm. If you don't, you're just going to make the same decision twice. Mm. And that we're doing this, whereas you want to be doing, you want to be yeah. doing that. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, there's a lot of um, hesit hesitant sales leaders or yeah. uh, businesses, yeah. the smaller businesses, where they're yeah. like, Oh, I don't agree with all of these these assessments, and yeah, you know, it really worked, and yeah. and and all of that. Um, how have you gone in and changed their mindset with those initial yeah. calls? It'd be interesting to know. Um, well, it's not just sales leaders. I've had some pretty interesting HR leaders. Oh um, wow! Yeah, I know. I won't, I won't name names, and I was like, mm, okay. Like, <laughs> um, I think the big thing is, look, I always say, look, objections aren't a bad thing. Objections are good. It means they're curious. Mm. That's what I tell everyone in the team. Um, it's when they're quiet, that's bad. But if they're saying something back to you, it's like, okay, there's something there. You just got to frame it differently because it's just an e there's just an ego behind what they're saying. Mm. So if they're saying, oh, I don't believe, you know, I'm not too sure about this and this, it just me. look, I sort of take it as they want to be a part of it as if they're kind of, you need them to sell it and you need them to think that they're the ones that are leading it mm. rather than you telling that it's right for them so if they're coming back and they're saying oh look i don't know if i agree with this and this and that you sort of just need to you need to just put it into a bit of a language that they understand and like i said before it's like i would then flip around and say well look you're very you're very good as a sales leader you know you're obviously really you know very smart you've got a great team you've built this would you not want another you to help support your role? Like, don't you think you'd want to? So you're trying to get them on board a bit now. So you're just trying to sort of stroke a bit of their ego because then they go, oh, yeah, it makes sense because everyone likes talking about themselves. It's just a simple place. Whenever I get into a, um, a situation where there's a bit of an objection, I just quickly turn it back on them and just stroke their ego a little bit. And usually it, it sort of dissipates <laughs> itself. And <laughs> but you, you want them to, you can't tell someone something. They, you need to kind of, the way you sort of do it is you need them to have the aha moment and you need to know what they know. And so you sort of ask them, it's like, you know, instead of telling them, you go, well, what's your thoughts about it? Like, do you find that this would be useful in this thing? Do you find it like, how would you sort of describe the system? Mm. Because a lot of the times it's, it's also fear of not knowing and they don't want to be made a fool. Mm. And so if you ask them, you know, what do you think about the system? And they might go, oh, well, look, I think it's this and this. And you go, oh no, good point. But actually, it's this and this. And then they go, oh, okay. So a lot of it is just educa simple education because there's a misinterpretation sometimes. There's there's ego, there's misinterpretations, there's a bit of ego stroking. But a lot of it is just the fact that 
they just don't know and they're a bit afraid of the fact that they don't know and they want to be the ones that's kind of leading the charge especially sales leaders they've got a pretty big um pretty big ego around them because but that's their role they've got to be the confident they've got to be the ones that are leading the charge but just by making sure to take a step back and under, try and get them to explain, you know, what do they think about it? What's your interpretation? How would you drive this? Yeah, just agree. take the back seat for a little bit. So you just try and see it through their eyes. That gives you some perspective of, okay, is it them against it or is it them just simply not knowing what's going on? Because then I can just tweak that easily. Yeah, and I think uh, it's also the, uh, you know, when talking to sales leaders, I, um, I'm always uh, a, a problem identifier. Right. I, I'm not there. I'm like, OK, I get I try to understand what the problems are and mm. identify them. Um, yeah. And then the problems that they didn't even know they had. Uh, and I think that's all about questioning and, and the right questioning. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, that's comes down thing. to that. Yeah. Yeah, and they love it because they they're in the same game, right? They're all about selling as well. Yeah. So when you when you can showcase that you, uh, you know, we've seen a problem that they didn't know they had, they're almost curious. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it's about they need to sell it themselves. Exactly the aha moment. So exactly. completely resonate there. Alex, look, we're coming to the end of our, our forty five minutes. Is there anything else you'd like to add that you think, you know, our our community of sales leaders, sales professionals, um, our HR leaders, I mean, um, should know about Ledge HR uh, as a solution and what, um, yeah. you know, what, what you think uh, is, it, it, what you think it's most um, prominent value proposition is, because there's a lot of, you know, HR tech solutions out there. Um, you know, what makes Ledge HR so different? I think ours is the fact that one, we definitely, we, we truly and utterly believe in what we do. This is not something that we sell. It's actually just, we don't so much sell solutions. We sell IP. Mm. And that's our thing. It's not, we don't do technology. If you, you've got to think about that next level, we want to make sure that everyone makes the best decision. So we, this isn't something we stripped that just made in the back. This is actually something we believe in. Like a lot of these solutions we've been actually using for, you know, over 18 months and we've strictly commercialized them into an external way so that we can give that, um, give those benefits to the community. So like I said, there's a 97% probation success rate. We've gone from zero to 30 people and no one has initiated their own departure. Um, we use all the technology along the way. We have a very good, um, you know, constructive communications uh, across the business. We have a very, we have a very eclectic mix of people uh, in our company from the super nerdy to the super salesy, but we're all, we all have this similar sort of North star. Like there's the, the constant bearing about where we're going towards, which is good. So I'd say the the big thing is that, you know, our solutions is very much it's come from something a real world situation mm. where we've felt and created a benefit and now we just want to scale that and, and that's the biggest thing and we've got a team to help support that we're not just pumping numbers to you we're actually you know um, interpreting collating the data so that we provide only relevant actual insights so that you can create the best outcome possible Mm -hmm. And look, the simple fact is we've been getting some amazing engagement the, the, from Canada, from client, from HR. It's been, um, it's been pretty ridiculous. And ultimately, it's about building edge. Mm -hmm. And we, we also know that you can't do it alone. So you know, like with you, we want people on the community as well. You know, if you grow, we grow. If we grow, you grow. Everyone wins. Everyone's learning. Um, we're just stacking up. We're creating an edge. And uh, we're kicking arms. Awesome. Well, I think uh, it's been very informative. I think you've shared some really good, um, you know, some great yeah. uh, examples on how you do things differently. And yeah. I'm so grateful for you taking this time. No, I thank you. I hope I was okay share. as well. Yeah, I think I think uh, things like these are so important. I mean, you kind of go back and you reflect on everything you've done and you're able to share. And yeah, um, yeah. and it's a real feel good moment. So I'm, I hope you enjoyed it as much as. Yeah, that no, was good. It was good to uh, go down memory lane a little bit. So it's it's good practice as well. 
You mentioned a really good stat, and I want to write this down. Uh, you mentioned something on the lines of uh, every hire is twice the cost of, what did you say? Uh, two and a half, yeah, two and a half times their salary to uh, to replace them. Yeah. I know there was a stat, but I said this is a good one to have in my toolbox. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's fine. And look, one thing I always, I also go to as well with companies, and, it, it, you know, about focusing on the, um, the implicit um, implicit costs mm. is when um, I brought, I did it on, I, I sent it on LinkedIn not long ago. I'll see if I can bring it up. But you can actually just go to like, it's like the Vic Gov um, Bureau of Statistics and it's like a staff turnover calculator. Yeah. And then, and then I just go, so when people are like, oh yeah, it's, it's a bit of money. And then I'm like, okay, well, let's just take an assessment of your company. So You've got 150 people and let's say the average is, you know, 95,000 for yeah. your average salary and your retention is, you know, 30% or your staff resignation is 30%. Mm. Um, you know, you're spending, you're already spending over $2 million a year in turnover. So when we're saying we want you to invest in this to prevent that and it's costing you that much, it's like, well, we're playing, we're clearly, it's just about applying that relativity mm. to what's actually playing out. It's just some people only see the explicit costs. They actually don't know what's going on in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you break it down to them like that mm. from a granular perspective, and I, I think it's a, it's a nice way to look at it. You know, what's your, what's it, what's, what's your turnover cost and what that, what, what's that costing your business, right? Well, thank you again. I've got a jet. Thank you. But, yeah, absolutely. Uh, really appreciate this. I've got a really good understanding of just the solutions and a high level pitch, which is great. So I'm going to make sure I put that in my toolbox when I'm talking <laughs> to people. I'm like, okay, so this is what one of our solution partners do. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, man. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.